Greetings YouTube. Yes, I realize this doesn't look like much at the moment, but it's going to be something interesting. One of my co-workers actually asked me a question not long ago about had I ever considered making one of those, you know, three-prong things that fishermen use, uh, that, you know, and I said, you mean tridents? And I, he said, yes, tridents. So I've decided to give it a try making a trident. Aha, uh -huh, get it? Trident. So, I have a tool handle here, which already has a convenient hole in it. Though the hole only goes in um, two and a half inches. So I'm going to take this drill bit, and I'm going to drill out the hole as far as I can. And if I bite the bit here, I should be able to get another inch and a half in there, which is about as deep as I think I can go. I don't have a drill bit long enough. Though, to tell you the truth, I could get one, but they're probably not going to be cheap because this is not a small, so what size is this thing? This is 3 8 so yeah, the long 3 8 drill bit is probably going to be expensive. I actually own a longer drill bit than this, but it's too big. It's like the next size up, and I don't want to open up that hole anymore, because it's exactly the size I need at the moment. I don't want to ruin that. So, at the moment, we're just going to try it and see how it goes. And I'm going to use threaded rod for the prongs, because the advantage of the threaded rod is I can use nuts, washers, and lock washers to hold all of the tines in place. Now, my plan is to have the center tine be out here about nine inches, and the two side prongs be about six inches. And I'm going to use this square stock tubing here as the cross piece. And I'm going to make this about six inches or so, probably maybe seven inches. Um, so I can come in a half inch for each uh, each hole. Uh, and then the whole thing is going to be put together again with nuts and bolts. And that bolt is going to sit, I'm going to want to sit it right inside there. So the, this nut will actually sit inside that hole so that the stock is right flush against that uh, ferrule here giving it as much stability as possible. And then I'm going to use epoxy, which I forgot to put in this video, I apologize. Um, I have some Gorilla epoxy, which I'm going to use to hold the threaded rod into the shaft. And because it's got lots of surface area with all these threads, and this is wood, and the combination should swell some, it should hold it fairly firmly, and this is a thrusting device designed to go at someone. So I'm pretty confident that that will well, hold it. And again, it's not ever going to be used in combat, probably. This is something I'm just doing for, you know, fun, because this is how I define fun. So, I'm going to now have to drill this out, um, and then uh, cut this up. So, I'm going to need a 7-inch piece of this, which, and the best way I can do that and get the control I want is probably going to be by hand, which is going to suck, but I can't think of another way to do it and get the control that I really want because uh, I don't have a, a cutoff saw designed to do this and my saws all is just you get so much vibration there's no way to get it clean at least not for me I don't have the experience with it um, cutting through this will be done by hand as well but that should be easier though there will be, have to be three cuts in this and only one cut in that because I'm going to need to figure out how long the threaded rod is going to need to be for me to get the distance you know figure out how, many, how much room I'm going to need for nuts and bolts and everything um, on either side so that I can then get the, the overall distance so it sits six inches above that um, cross piece. And at the end, I'm going to end up with extra rod and extra tubing, but I'm sure I can find something to use that for in future projects of mine. So, we're at stage one. Let's see how it goes. All right, so here we are at my kitchen table um, because I don't have a proper workbench at the moment, and this is a relatively heavy-duty, thick um, piece of furnishing. And interesting uh, piece of uh, information, this table was built by my mother as a gift to me. Um, so I've set this up um, using one of my grandfather's old clamps. I'm using a, a rag so that it has a little cushion against the table, and this piece of channel lock, which I scavenged from a construction area, um, to allow me to grip a cylindrical object um, and not have it uh, skitter about and this, holding it all in place. So then I will then sit on this stool that I'm currently sitting on and 
Gonna put the drill bit in there first, and then start it up, and then slowly try to drill in as far as I can go. That's the next stage. Alright, the tool handle has been drilled out as deeply as I can go with the drill bits I have on hand. Um, so now I'm going to start cutting up the uh, threaded rod to the lengths I need. I have a sacrificial block of wood here so that I do not hurt the table when I'm, when I'm either sawing or from the clamping process. I may well cut through this rag, I don't care, it's a rag, but at the moment this is all firmly in place. And I have a glove on so I can grip this threaded rod comfortably. I will not need a glove on my other hand as I use my hacksaw. So that's stage three. Update. Discovered that the blade I had on my hacksaw was really dull. Got about three quarters of the way through this rod and then it just stopped. So I put a new one on here. Let's see if this one does any better. Okay, so we have our three pieces of rotting cut. Um, I have got found my my Gorilla Epoxy. And there we have the remainder of the 36 inch threaded rod that I purchased. And I'm, I'm sure I'll find something to do with that. So now, time to mark that square stock and cut. Tubing has been marked and is now set up with the sacrificial block and the rag to help protect the tubing. Um, so hopefully I won't damage it too much because I'm bound to find a use for the 29 inches of square stock tubing at some point in the future. Um, it's really nice stuff, it's good quality. Um, and uh, with my new saw blade in there, the last two cuts I made were a whole lot better than the first one. So we'll see how well it goes on this stuff. So I now have a seven inch piece of square stock tubing and there's some rather nasty burrs on here. So I'm breaking out a file so that I can uh, take those off so it's not overly sharp. That's the end that came with it, so it's uh, it's pretty pretty well um, finished as it is. So now to take off the burrs. So here we have my piece of deburred 7 inch square stock tubing. I have used a uh, marker and my my uh, ruler, my, my scale, to uh, mark out three holes uh, with my punch and I'm going to use a starter drill bit, this small diameter here, to drill through one half of each, uh, for each hole, and then I will use the larger drill bit to drill all the way through um, the whole um, square piece of square stock, tu stock tubing. I don't want to start out with a big hole, so I'm going to start out with, with this reasonably sized bit at least halfway through. All right, so now I have all three of my holes um, drilled to one side. You can't see the other two. They're, they're hidden. So now it's time to move up to the next size drill bit. Hopefully it will go in fairly smoothly now that I have a nice um, consistent pilot hole. Let's cross our fingers. So the holes are now drilled in the cross piece and I actually ended up starting out with the uh, pilot drill as I mentioned. I went up to this drill which I thought was going to be the right size um, and it worked okay in the shaft, um, making a nice snug hole, but it did not work well enough in the uh, square stock tubing because it's less forgiving. So I ended up having to go up this rather long drill bit, but it's the only one I've got in that diameter. The only thing I have in that di diameter in a shorter drill bit is actually a wood bit, which I didn't want to use, of course, because I'm going go, I'm going through steel. So I used that, and it's not particularly sharp, um, but I picked it up at a yard sale for like... I don't know, 50 cents, and you know, it uh, it did me well today, and that's all that really matters. Next up is going to be taking my trusty angle grinder, and I'm now going to grind points onto all of these, because you know, uh, you can't really have a trident be a trident unless it's got points. Um, and then I'm going to use that cardboard tray, which was um, donated to me by my lunch, um, to mix up the uh, Gorilla Epoxy. Alrighty, we're outside on my porch and I have a very narrow window of opportunity. It may rain shortly, so I have to move my buns. I want to take these burrs off, make that flat, turn it around and put the point on the other end. I got tired of always getting my clothes dirty while I'm using my grinder, so today I went out and purchased an apron. I couldn't finish the grinding yesterday because it began to rain, so hopefully I will get the grinding done today. Alrighty, it's not perfect. 
but it comes to a point and the other two look pretty much just like this. I don't have a lathe or you know uh, access to a bridge port or anything so I can't machine this perfectly. I'm, uh, I'm using that grinder set up here on this block with that clamp um, using the rag there to protect the, the threads, at least some of the threads. I don't really care if the threads near the tip are ruined because you know I'm not going to use those threads. Um, but there you go. It's got a point on it. All three have points on it. So now it's going to come to the assembly portion and then the epoxying portion. So here we have the, ass whoops, the assembled trident head. And I set the depth here with this story stick, just a zip tie with a margin marker uh, notation on it, because that's the depth of the hole. So I want the bolt to be just shy of that, so I know I get a full seat, especially seeing as I'm going to be pouring um, epoxy in there, and up, uh, hopefully up to the up in this upper area too. And then I'm going to shove this whole thing together, and we're going to see how that goes. So the next stage is mixing epoxy. Yay! And there, folks, we have one trident. Now, the hole I drilled in this wooden shaft was almost exactly the same size as this threaded rod. So, I poured the epoxy into the hole. I probably filled in about yay much in the bottom. And then I put the rod in, and then I just essentially screwed this in using the threads to bite into the wood and pull it all the way in until it bottomed out, until the... Uh, the washer that I've placed here. Um, the lock washer is actually, yeah, the lock washer is bottoming out on this shaft. So this is not going anywhere. That uh, That's solid. And remember, it, it is a, a thrusting weapon. Um, and the combination of being very snug and uh, being epoxied in play should keep this in uh, quite securely. Well, I think it's only appropriate that we uh, give you the overall view of what this looks like in comparison to me. I'm five foot eight, and uh, sorry about the loud noise there. I'm five foot eight, and so this thing is um, oh, it's a little over six foot total, I guess, from all the way to the tip. Um, is it appropriate? This is the the most aquatic portion of my home. Um, but there you have it, folks. One homemade trident. Uh, so, and I used this just from the equipment I found at the hardware store. So, you know, work handle, square stock tubing, threaded rod, nuts, bolts, and epoxy. All these things could be found at a, uh, at a hardware store without any difficulty. Sorry for the camera being in my way. Um, so, this is something that I think anybody who has access to just hand tools. You could have put the points on this with a file if you really were ambitious. I'm, I'm not that ambitious um, and I, uh, I just used a, uh, um, a grinder because, you know, I had the grinder. So I might as well use what you got, right? So, folks, there is my very own handmade trident.